In this video, I'll show you one possible way we can use OpenAI's ChatGPT within Home Assistant. In this example, I'll show you how to generate a greeting message from ChatGPT on your dashboard. Firstly, we need an API token from OpenAI. When you come to this page, you'll be prompted to create a login if you haven't already got one. We can then go to this View API Keys page to generate a new key to use in Home Assistant. Click on Create New Key, then copy the key and paste it somewhere for use later on. This is the only time you'll be able to view the key. Back on Home Assistant now, this is the area where I want my greeting message to be. First, we need to create a new sensor, so go to your File Editor add-on and open up your configuration.yaml. I'm also going to add two additional sensors which we can then use to pass the entity value data to the chat GPT prompt. So the first sensor I'm going to be adding is a temperature sensor which captures the current temperature outside. This value is taken from the Home Assistant's default weather entity which you should all have. The second is going to be a time sensor. This can be used to pass the current local time to the GPT prompt. And finally, we need a command line sensor. I'll break down in detail what all of this command does, but for now, all that needs changing is the auth token we copied earlier from OpenAI. So, copy the token we captured earlier and paste it over the top of auth token here. Once you're happy with all your sensors, you'll need to restart Home Assistant to have them all populate and become usable. While Home Assistant is restarting, let's break down the command line sensor in more detail. This is the command line sensor we've just included. I've spaced things out just to make it easier to read. Firstly, we have the name of the sensor, which I've used GPT response. Next is the command. For this, we use post followed by the open AI address. This will tell the commands to post this payload of instructions to open AI. Then, on content type, I've outlined the following content will be in a JSON format. Authorization is where we pasted in our access token we got from OpenAI. Without this, the only response we'll get is unauthorized. Model defines what version of chat GPT you want to use. I'll leave a link below where you can get more information on all the different model variations. Inside messages, we have content, this is the prompt we want to send to OpenAI, much like you would on ChatGPT, just to start the conversation. In this example, I've included four different templates. The first template is to capture the value of our time sensor. Next, we have a string format time. This will capture the current day of the week. Adding an A on the end will format this to a readable full name. Without this, it would just show as a numeric value. Below this we have the template to capture the current weather state, so rainy, cloudy, sunny and so on. And then finally we have a template for the outside temperature. Below the content I've defined the parameters that are specific for this GPT model. First is top P, which is used to control the level of randomness when predicting outcomes. The value for this is either 0 or 1. Temperature controls the creativity of the model's prediction. Again, this is either 0 or 1. Max tokens specifies the maximum number of tokens that can be generated with each response. One token, for example, is seen as a piece of word. I'll let you do the math here, but a free non-paid OpenAI account will be given $18 worth of tokens. 0.002 dollars equates to 1,000 tokens. 1,000 tokens is roughly the same as 750 words. Even with a non-paid account, we can stretch this instance out for a long period of time without ever having to pay. By default, the max tokens are set to 4,096 tokens. I've lowered this to 320, as we don't need that many words for our greeting message. Presence penalty determines how likely it is for GPT to repeat the same words or phrases over and over again. For the value template, I've specified that the response we'll get from OpenAI will be in a JSON format, and we only want to extract the content section to use as the value of this sensor. Finally at the bottom, scan interval tells the sensor how often in seconds you want to post this command. 
Once Home Assistant has restarted, we can check on the States page to see if the sensors were created successfully. Search for the name of your sensor and you should see the GPT response like I have here. So, now we can add this onto our dashboard and use this sensor. In this example, I'll be adding this into my Markdown card, which is on my header area. In the Markdown card, all I need to do is include a template which points to the value of the GPT response sensor. If you want to see a video on how I created this Markdown card, or my whole dashboard, I'll leave a link below to a video where I go into more detail. This includes details on the use of custom components installed from Home Assistant's community store, as well as other tips and tricks to fully deck out the look of your dashboard. After adding in this template, you should now see an automatically generated greeting from GPT. One thing I've noticed, after restarting Home Assistant, the sensor will post the command to OpenAI before your time, date or weather entities have had the chance to load back up. This results in GPT unable to see the value of the entity. However, on the next response you should see the GPT's response make sense again once all your entities have loaded back up from your reboot. And that's it for this video, just a quick use case for GPT within Home Assistant. If you found this video helpful, please leave a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and let me know in the comments what use cases you found for GPT or any other AI tech within your Home Assistant.